Hi guys, welcome to another lovely week here in the United Kingdom. My name's Stuart Carter-Smith and I'm uh, known as the Happy Golfer. I try my best to uh, bring content to you guys which is uh, fun to watch and also you can learn some tips from it. This week I've got a fun mental strategy game. Um, now, it's not so much fun, it's more challenging. And I would say this is kind of better for the uh, low handicappers, pro golfers. You can even try this if you're just struggling with medal rounds, uh, but really it is a tough test. And the basic premise is that you hit three tee shots, only on the par fours, because the par threes, it chews the tees up, and uh, uh, you know, that's not, not good for our courses, but off a tee bag it's fine. As long as there's no one around, it's got to be fairly quiet. And what we do is, we hit three tee shots on every par four. If you want to make this a little bit easier, you can actually hit two tee shots. And what we're going to do is try and plot our way around the golf course from the worst of each of the tee shots. And that's really important. Because the main part of this is, when you get into a medal, we all get stressed out because we've got one ball. But I like to flip that on its side and say, can you imagine if you had to hit the worst from three balls? So then when you're out having a medal round, um, you look down at the one ball thinking, well, I've only got to hit this one. Okay, so we're going to concentrate on this one, the whole pre-shot routine. And uh, the whole idea is to make sure each one of these shots are as good as you can make it. on the left side of the fairway. That's not too bad, that one. Okay, that's the best of the three, so I'm sure I won't be taking that one. Okay, so up this hole, I've hit my three shots. I've hit two quite well, one down the left, and I've got two which are in the middle. So we're gonna eliminate those two. They were sort of quite good shots, actually. This one was pulled a bit, and it was a little bit further left, but it's, it's kind of used the slope a slight bit, and it's left me now uh, with a tricky little shot here. As you can see, I'll spin it round. The, uh, the pin is round the corner. You might be able to see that now. And so I'm gonna have to hit off a down slope a little hooky one round the corner. So not position A by any means. So the biggest trouble for me on this one is the fact that we've got, um, I'm not sure whether the camera's shown it, but it's quite a, um, the ball is actually below my feet. Normally that would block it off to the right. If we're trying to hit a, like a hook around this corner, around these trees, it would be better if the ball was above our feet, because that is where you naturally hit a draw to the, to the left. But off a downhill slope, it's going to go off to the right. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking one extra club so I can swing a little bit smooth, slightly smoother, and I'll probably hit a low draw around the corner and try and get it up somewhere. Like I still could get this quite close, but to be honest, I just want to make sure I'm around these trees and I'm going to make sure that I get enough hook on it to get myself back into play. I've seen that the, the kick, it kicks in from uh, the left, so a slight overhook is fine. But if I block it and don't hook it, um, it's going to go in the trees on the right there. So the main thing is to make sure I get that shape. There we go. <clears throat> I feel like I'm going to slightly punch it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, the thing is, if I was now practicing, I probably would have picked that ball up. 
because I've got these two in the middle of the fairway and that's all very good but then you never mentally when I come out here say on a medal um, if I don't hit it right at the middle like this I'm then thinking uh, it sort of stresses you out you know, stresses your head out a bit thinking to yourself about uh, having to hit perfect shots and have that pressure on the great thing about this game is if you can make a half decent score or get it round in you know uh, as low as your handicap maybe then it gives you confidence you can go out in that next medal round thinking well I'm never gonna hit out of my three shots I'm never gonna be as bad as the worst one of three shots on every hole and then it starts to give you confidence rather than being down the middle all the time and uh, having that pressure of hitting the good shots from perfect positions. So in this instance, it was quite nice. I managed because I didn't take the exact club. I took a seven iron and uh, when really it could have been an eight or possibly even a nine, it just enabled me to control my swing a little bit more and definitely get that kind of draw swing, which is all I wanted. So you can see it comes in from the, the left here. I knew that. This was the danger area, blocking it up onto that tee, which is a little bit closer than the flag, which means you can go straight into the trees there, which was a bad one. I'm kind of, I'm okay. I've got a nice putt there. Possible birdie on the first. In fairness, the tee shot wasn't that bad, but uh, it still was the worst one from the three. So in my head, on a medal round, I shouldn't be that bad. Okay, no birdie this time, but I'm feeling pretty good that I uh, managed to get out there with a nice par. Would it be nice to make that birdie putt? Because I know there's probably some dangers on its way, but let's get on to the next, um, which on this course is actually the fourth. The first couple of holes, we got a par three, and then it's an iron shot on the, uh, on the second hole. So I thought I'd bring you guys out to a couple of the uh, longer holes. I'll just do a few of these just to give you the idea. Can watch me hit a few shots. I'll talk through my strategy on the hole um, and uh, we'll see if I can hit some really ropey tee shots and try and get out of the trouble. This is the fourth, par five. Playing quite short at the moment because I've um, got a nice downhill, um, which is quite hard this time of the summer, which is quite nice. Definitely won't be taking that one. Swing on that. Now the pressure starts to build, so now I really would like to take that one. Right, that's straight down the middle as well. A boring video if I keep doing this. Right, maybe this one go a bit offline. So I bet I'll end up taking that one. Okay, so the first two, it absolutely crushed. So, and bullet straight. And the pressure did start to build because the last one, I really didn't want to be hitting it out of the trees or rough or something. Now, it was the worst shot of the three. Whether it's slightly because you start getting tired or whether you mentally get a bit fatigued or maybe just hit a bad shot, you know, like we do. But either way, it was the worst swing of the three, and it's the one I'm gonna to have to take. Now in my mind, I'm already thinking, well, the first two were really good. So next time I play this hole in a medal or a competition, I'm gonna be thinking, you know, it took me three shots to hit a bad one on this instance. Um, so I like the way this game plays with your brain. And uh, 
I n would normally like to fancy myself hitting this fairway. It's got a nice sort of funnel neck. Looking forward to seeing where these are. Right, so I promise this doesn't always happen, but yeah, so I've come down to my balls. There's those two. Now I would say that's crazy together for two tee shots, um, but it does sort of scoop in around this sort of area here. So they do um, kind of gather into that slot. But, but funnily enough, there's those two. They're 346, so I'm hitting my new driver really well. And um, in fairness, the ground is quite hard, so you do get a fair amount of run on this hole. My other one, which I thought was left, which felt a lot more left than that, to be honest, has just kind of stopped just before this stuff. Um, it's not ideal, but it, there is a shot, and it's, if I plonk you down there, hopefully you can see that. Uh, I've got 145 left in. I've got a nine on, it's gonna run out. And I'm expecting maybe a tiny little flyer out of this stuff. Still got a bit of trees, but they shouldn't. They're not gonna restrict me much, I don't think. No, I'm not hitting anything, so uh, all being well, I should be able to get this. So this is a par five, so um, this should be okay. I still would like to make at least four though. Boy, you shouldn't be missing with nine irons anyway. So I think that's okay. It's not particularly close though, I have to say. Pick these two up. Um, so you're starting to get the gist. I mean, it really is kind of a, like an elite player's game really, because like most um, sort of higher handicapper players are gonna hit some pretty ropey ones. And it can just put you on a real downer, you know. If you hit uh, one in three well, whereas for us really we should hit kind of four out of five well, you see what I mean? So it's a game where maybe if you're a sort of six handicap, seven, that kind of thing, or lower or better, right down to Tour Pro I'd recommend this for. It just gets you in that mindset of each one of these balls are really crucial and they get more crucial each one you hit. So if you hit a good one down the first, or the first one of the three that you hit well, you know, you uh, you then have to follow that with two, just as good or better, you know, because um, you know that you're going to end up walking to the worst one, which is hard, it's hard, it's really tricky, but uh, okay, let's see where we are. Okay, so as luck would have it, um, it was a little bit of a problem, that lie, just slightly fluffy, which made me lose a little bit of control, so I pitched just past the flag and I've rolled through uh, just off the back of the green. Um, there's a couple of things to talk about here. Um, always look from these chip shots, look from behind because I mean it seems a bit excessive but like reading a putt from both angles but even with a chip shot no matter what handicap you are if you're trying to play the most perfect shot which you can do a chip shot it's not like you're trying to hit it 350 off the tee I mean we can all hit a perfect chip shot so at least know what it's gonna do when it hits the green like at least try and see where the contour is because it's gonna make a massive it have a massive effect on the ball you know if we're on a slight slope from right to left it's gonna kick it left and it can kick it six eight foot left well that's a huge problem if you've actually aimed for an area and you've hit the area you're aiming for but you didn't realize that the slope was on it so take a good look uh, this is a tricky one because it is sloping right to left. But I feel really confident about getting it close. Um, firstly, you have to do that. <laughs> You've got to feel confident about these shots. And secondly, you know, it's a, it's a better player. You just can't not get up and down from here. You have to take advantage of these. This one's going to be up and down for birdie. I just want a tap in. I can see that it's sloping slightly to left and slightly down. Now, the first things I'm thinking is, Let's try and get it past the hole, because if I get it past the hole, I'm going to have a, a, a nice, pretty straight putt back up the slope. So that's my first thing in the brain. The lie's okay, we can check that one. The lie is absolutely fine, I can do anything from that. It is in a little bit of semi, um, so maybe, maybe spin slightly less than if I was just there. I'm going to throw it about, you know, kind of a, a, a mid-height. 
try and land it on that little plateau. Hopefully, just watch it up, run, run up, just kind of past the hole. I just make, got to make sure you can see that the green is slightly soft there as well. So I'm going to just give it a little bit extra here. Okay, so that was it's okay. It kind of acted as I thought, um, but even me reading that green, it did kick off this little slope here a little bit more than I thought, and it's rolled off to the left, but the weight was kind of about right. And uh, for this purposes, that's looking like a birdie to me. Um, so for me, it's really important to make birdie there. It's uh, a very short, playing very short par five today, downwind. Um, and with that little speed slot down the fairway, you know, it's nice to get it out there around the sort of 350 mark, which really makes the hole completely accessible. Nine iron in, I still missed the green and still had to tidy up, but uh, I would expect to tidy up from just around the green like that probably maybe eight times out of 10. You know, if I can chip it up close, it's stone dead. And if I can, I'm never really gonna be outside of about six foot um, with such a simple shot that that one was. So that's all good. Okay, on to the next. We've got a few ways of playing this. And this is the, this is the fifth. 359, so not too long which is nice and it's going to be playing pretty short today. Okay, so it's a slight dog leg to the right, so we definitely do want some, I want to hit a fade on this for sure. If I keep it straight, it's going in the trees over there on the left, it's deep hay. So, I'm going to aim it at the marker post and I'll just as long as I get some sort of fade on it, I won't be using that one. Okay, that was fine. It's a nice shot that one was. Shame I can't use that one. Now again, I'm thinking, make sure I get that fade and everything will be fine. That's fine, that's slight to the left of the marker post. That's all good. Getting tired now. So, now the pressure's on this one, which is what this game is all about. I'm right down the middle. I'm in perfect shape on those two. This is the one I don't want to be playing from. Again, that last one, slightly left. That's gonna be really interesting. Um, the first two I think were perfect. Again, they're gonna be right next to each other. But the other one, similar to the last one, um, just started a bit further left. It did have the fade on it, but uh, it's gonna be close. Hopefully I'm not in the deep stuff, but if I am, you know, that is what happens. Let's have a walk up and see what we've got. Right, so the first two, as I said, I think that one would have been the best one of the three. That one's absolutely fine. Um, you do need a lot of fade around this tree back there. Um, so those two are great. This one, which was the, again, the one I slightly pulled to the left. It's still faded, but my, my line was just off to the left slightly. Um, we're just, yeah. So this one, I mean, if it was an inch to the left, I'd be in all sorts of trouble, but again, it's not the end of the world, the hole's not that long, still in play. Um, I might be able to just go over the edge of that little tree there if I get a strike on it. And if I don't, as long as I keep it to the right, I'm gonna be able to possibly chip and putt. So uh, I'll just try and get a half decent strike on it. I gotta be careful, if I take a backswing and move that or snap it off with a practice swing, that would be a, a penalize me a shot. So I'm gonna do, uh, just get the idea from here. What I'm going to do, 
think we're okay. Okay, right. See if I can just get it. I'm thinking the center of the green. If I hit the center of the green, it'll be fairly close. That's all right. One. Well. It's off to the right, but one of those things you know you definitely start to appreciate the golf course so I mean if I was in normally in practice I'd just pick that ball up and come down to these two which I hit miles down here which is what we're all trying to do and play one of these but uh, we don't always hit it absolutely out the screws miles down the middle when we're under co competition stress and heat yeah sometimes we do we hope to uh, but often you end up in the worst spots. And the confidence from there is suddenly a lot lower because in practice we've been hitting it from the middle of the fairways and you suddenly put you on the back foot thinking, oh God, I'm gonna drop a shot here. Yeah, we're well not that close. It wasn't a great shot, but it was out of trouble. And if I'm gonna miss a tee shot like on the last there, you know, I can still make birdie here if I hold a decent putt. That's quite nice. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip a hole next. This is the par three next. I'm gonna go to the next uh, stroke two index uh, par four. Right, this is par four, stroke index two. Um, it's the seventh. Now with this one, we definitely want to draw. So on the last one, it's quite good, uh, these golf courses, when you look at them, if you can hit it both ways. Um, I'm gonna try and hit three draws down here. If I overdraw it, it's no problems at all. If I fade it or hit it straight, it's in deep hay. At least that gives me a mental note of the things that I definitely want to happen rather than what I don't want to happen. So I'm thinking, just make sure you draw it. Yeah, that's drawn. I'd say if anything, that one was slightly smothered. So I think it's gonna be okay. I don't think I'll end up taking it. I think I'll hit a worse one than that but uh, sort of slightly dipping on me, that one. But again, it definitely drew, so it's in, uh, it's in fine position. That's fine as well. Same kind of shot, actually. I'll try and hit one better than those two. I've not had this before, where the first two have been not particularly good today. The first two have always been so difficult because they were being They've been perfect down the middle, and the last one is almost like the one you're going to take. This one I feel like I can hit better than those. We'll see, I guess. That one's crushed. Yeah, I'll rip that one. So you find out doing this, maybe sometimes it's, a, it's almost a mindset. Like that was the same tee, the same person, Three shots. The first one I slightly smothered, but it was okay. So my brain was thinking, telling me, all right, well, we got away with that, it's okay. The second one I was just trying to almost reproduce to make sure I didn't go right. I pretty much did reproduce the exact same shot. The last one I thought, I'm not gonna do another one of those, you know, because it's rare for me out of three balls, you really, to not hit at least two of them pretty okay. So the last one I completely relaxed on and just swang it and uh, yeah, I hit it, I struck that one really well. Flew, flew well, a lot straighter, a lot less uh, less draw on it, should we say. But those first two are gonna have gone quite a long way because they that kind of draw spin um, really kind of releases the ball out. You just have to make sure that the ball flight starts on the right line is where quite a lot of people go wrong. If they're gonna do a massive hook shot, they don't aim right enough uh, and wonder why they hook it into the trees. <laughs> okay, what a gorgeous day. 
So guys, um, give this a go. I know that it's a really tough thing to do, but it's a bit of fun when you're on your own. Um, but see it through and see how you get on. Maybe start off with just two balls and take the worst of two. I kind of quite like three because by the last one, you really are looking at that last one. Depending on what you've done with the first two, it can build pressure to yourself and uh, it ends up pretty much when you're later on in the round, you've got a good score going. We're trying to beat your own personal best. Um, those balls really build up onto the, the shots that you uh, have out when you're having your medal competition. And it really will, if you can break your handicap or get something near it with even the two balls, that will give you so much mental strength when you go into your next medal. Uh, knowing that the worst of your tee shots each time, you can handle it. And that's on every hole, or at least the par fours. Uh, let alone just one out there, you know. As we thought, we've got, there's one right down there. That's the one I hit really well. That could happen in a medal. Just done it. Um, and we got the, the ones that slightly hit worse. There's one just there. And there's one back here. Obviously, we're going to take this one back here. See what we got. There we go. 92 yards. Um, now the trouble is there's a big scoop in the front of this green, so I do need to carry it onto the top of that or run it up that slope. I can't guarantee what it's going to do running up that slope. Often when you try and run it up, you kind of pitch it into the slope and it stops or spins back. Or it gets chased out the green runs off the back. So 94, I've got my 100 yard club here. If I take 20% off this, uh, there's no way I'm going to go long because the, the pin's on the back of the green. It's a flag that's not really go time for me, even though I've only got 100 yards. Because if I fire it all over that flag, there's such out of this, uh, the control from this semi here, uh, there's a very good chance it's gonna run off the back. And if it runs just off the back, it's into really bad trouble. And then you've short-sided yourself coming back in. Um, so if I hit a 70 one of these, 70%, which works out at 70 yards, I think it should be fine. The lie's okay. Just try and be confident on the areas that we want to put it in, rather than the areas that we want to miss. So I know that anything just left of this flag will be fine, I'll be putting up the green. Um, so that's the area that I'm going to be aiming for. That's a risky one. That's a risky one, fellas. I would say ladies, but I've got no ladies watching this channel at all. Where are you ladies? Anyway, so I'll pick this one up. Oh, this one went, went a bit of a mile. It's amazing when you get the right tee shot with the right flight on the right line. It's incredible how, how much longer, I think this one was maybe 25, 30 yards longer than those other two. So I'll grab this one. And uh, I don't know whether you can see that. Just on the back of the green there. But you'll see the trouble when we get down there. And why the thought process. It was only 100 yards, but it really was a shot to kind of pay a bit of respect to. Here's the big slope that I was talking about big slope across the green there. If you hit any of this, it just rolls down and then you've got a really tough putt coming up. So first objective is to try and hit a shot that's going to get over this hump. Um, we've got a bit of a flat bit. This is quite lush here. So off to the right wasn't too bad, but then it got it's really bare here. And then there's mine, which is a yeah, pretty good shot. But then you just go slightly off the back, then it runs down into deep hay. So you can see why I was making such a song and dance about a hundred yard shot. You would thought we could just go up and, you know, tap those in. <laughs> tap them in. Who am I? Okay, let's put you down here. Alright, nice to get one to 
finish. Well, I enjoyed that. Hopefully, you enjoyed that, guys. Um, let me know in the comments below how you get on. Give it a whirl. I'm really sorry for getting you into this one because it's a tough one that messes with your brain. So you've got your three tee shots on uh, on your par fours as long as the course is quiet, and uh, you're going to take you're going to score from your worst one of the three each time, and uh, see if you can't get it round. Give it a whirl. You'll be surprised. It will make you tough, make you guys tough in the head, which is what we all need when we're out there playing for whatever we're playing for with our buddies or maybe uh, out there in a medal or a competition. Okay guys, thanks very much. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell button and all those businesses if you want to. If not, just watch the content. It's always free. Uh, it's always good to chat with you guys, so send me some messages. Um, put, a, put something down below on whether you liked it, whether you didn't, and what kind of uh, content you'd like to do in the future because I'm doing two or three a week now, so I can get around to doing an awful lot of stuff. So uh, see you guys next week. Cheers.